male leopard, it is Tingana. Good, and he stepped, and he walked up on cue. Jeez, I could not have planned that better. Remember, this is a live African safari, so we can't uh, in edit, put things together. This is happening right now, this very second. If you want to ask any questions about this leopard, you can do it by using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Now, let's keep following this beautiful big boy. For anyone who's new, he's our dominant male leopard on Juma, and he is what one would call a marcher. Now, I tracked him into Elephant Plains yesterday, and that's about five or six kilometers uh, to the west of us. And uh, he is now back after walking all the way through round. He's literally just been marching. I think he's definitely feeling pressure from other males and coming into his territory. So that's why he's marching so much at the moment. Isn't this stunning? Oh. He's going to leave a little deposit and while he's going to move St. Mork, I'm hoping he's going to soar as a lot this morning as well. But I just need to call the in on the game drive radio so everyone else knows that it's here. So the first of the game drives are out. We're normally out just before everyone else. Ralph, we've got Tingana at Shibam Junction with Treehouse Dam Road. Hey, Firm. So he's looking relatively well fed. Ralph, just me, he's now mobile uh, east towards Treehouse Dam. He had an itchy ear. Isn't this so exciting? What a wonderful way to start the morning. I told you, for those who were watching the pre-show, that Viam and I were feeling lucky this morning. Uh, hi, Zaz. Zaz is wondering, will Tingana take over Karula's territory if she doesn't return? Zaz, she, he already encompasses Karula's territory. So male leopards will have a territory that might have up to four or five different females within it. So uh, he already has this territory. So Karula returning or not uh, doesn't really make a difference to him, apart from the fact that, of course, he's lost one of his lady consorts if she doesn't return. Now, these are tracks we follow often, and often he manages to evade us by moving out of uh, the area. So it's really great to find him coming into Juma really early in the morning. And he's gonna go have a quick little scent mark. Isn't he gorgeous? He is a prime specimen in prime condition. Oh, I can hear some elephants behind us breaking branches. Oh, he's definitely got an itchy neck. That's the second time he's scratched that spot. So he's heading straight down towards Treehouse uh, Dam, and what I'm hoping from there is he'll actually cut sort of towards the north, deeper into Juma. Uh, he might carry on east, down towards the Mawati, and out towards Torchwood. Uh, both of those routes are routes that he uses quite regularly. And Meow is wondering what 
does the spot pattern mean? Well, I will show you when he, we get a chance to look at his face and meow. So basically, when we refer to the spot pattern on the leopard, we're not referring to all the spots on his body. Although apparently Tingana's got a smiley face on one of his shoulders. So the main way researchers and safari guides identify uh, different leopards, because they do sometimes move territories and change areas, is that there is a line of spots above the last line of whiskers. Oh. And that uh, is what we refer to as the spot pattern. And uh, each individual leopard, of course, has a unique spot pattern. It's as unique as a fingerprint. But I will remember to show you, but maybe once he, he stops moving for a little bit, and uh, I will show you a close-up of his particular spot pattern. Oh, he's got an itchy, itchy side there. Scratch, 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 scratch. He's still not giving us a chance to see the spot pattern nicely. Let me see. Oh, there. Oh, oh, just too quick, I'm afraid. But I'm pretty sure he will start resting or stop to, to listen at some point this morning. And we will give you a chance to see his spot pattern and meow. Now, of course, and meow, that's the one thing Mr. Tingana doesn't do. Oh, now it's the other side that's itchy. And that's meow. He chuffs, sores, growls, snarls, but no meows. Wild Bill would like to know what does the different movements of a leopard's tail mean? Now, Wild Bill, it all depends. So when his tail's still like that, uh, there is really uh, no meaning to it. And you can see that white tip. Now that white tip is a following mechanism. And f normally more important for females uh, because they have cubs that need to follow them through the bush. Although females will follow that white tip of a male while they're mating. Now the most interesting thing for me is uh, well, like most big cats, if a leopard starts flicking its tail aggressively from side to side or up or down, and I mean big movements, it means anger or aggression, and you should try keep your distance. But I think, I still think the coolest one is when they get spotted by impala or any other antelope, or even by birds or squirrels that start making a lot of noise. They put their tail up in the air. Oh, smell that, Vim. Oh. Who would think that you could enjoy the smell of urine so much? And uh, But leopard urine smells like buttered popcorn. It is wonderful. And so I was saying, uh, if he gets spotted, he puts that tail up. It's sort of like a white flag. Okay, guys, you've spotted me. I'm not going to try to eat you anymore. Now, of course, there could always be impala or kudu or something else uh, out to eat around the treehouse waterhole. So it's going to be very exciting to see what's around the next bend. Of course, there could be absolutely nothing. Now, Rebecca is wondering, could he be tracking Shongile and Hosanna? And I know people are quite worried uh, that he's in the same area where they hang out. Um, I have not seen any tracks of either of them on the road. Uh, it's unlikely that he's going to be tracking them. We can have another, just a quick look in the soft sand. So the only leopard tracks here are his. And there is a possibility he might run into them, but I have seen him with them before, and he growls and snarls at them quite a bit, but he didn't try kill them, but they were much younger then. So there is always a possibility, and Tangana is quite notorious for eating cubs. Uh, he's done it, I think, four or five times, especially when he first moved into the area. 
There we go, he's going for another scent mark. Leaving that lovely buttered popcorn scent in the air. Oh, has he spotted something? No, he just looked like he might have spotted something there for a second. Now, one of the advantages the little ones do have um, if he does try eat them or chase them is that they're much lighter than him so they can get right up into the edge of branches where he's too heavy to get and we're going to keep following him as he has heads east towards the rising sun